right. So, uh, let's see. Why was this a parabola again? One squared variable. Okay. Doesn't matter whether they're positive or negative. It's just one squared variable. Automatically, you know it falls in the category of a parabola. Okay. So this is one that by the end of today, we could probably figure out all the important information about it. Put it in the form that we need here. Okay. Um, why was this a hyperbola? Okay. okay. What is it, Ira? They had different signs. Same thing here. So you can see this is a positive one fourth. Don't really care about the one fourth. This is a negative one sixteenth. Don't really care about the sixteenth. What matters is that they're different signs. Same thing here. Those are different. Okay. Circle, same sign and same coefficient. An ellipse, two squared variables, just like a circle and just like a hyperbola, but they have the same sign and different coefficients. Okay. So that's how we can categorize those. All right. So 11.2 is all about parabolas. All right, so just like a circle, it comes from a definition, and here's the definition. Okay, a parabola is the set of points on a plane that are equidistant from a given point and a given line. So equidistant from a given point, well, if we just stopped right there, that would define a circle, but now we're throwing something else in. They've got to be the same distance from a point and a line. Okay, so the given point is called the focus, and the given line is called the directrix. Directrix. It's a wicked name. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. On each one of these, so we talked about the definition for a circle. When we start a new conic section, I'm going to give you the definition. We're going to take a look at how it does what it does, Okay, why it produces the shape that it does. Okay, and then, then we'll talk about how that transfers into an equation and that sort of thing. Okay, so, and, and when I do these, I'm going to set them up so they're really nice and convenient. Okay, we'll do it as, as nicely as we possibly can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a point that's at 0, comma A. So it's going to be right on the y-axis. And the line that I'm going to give you, so here's the focus, the directrix that I'm going to give you is the line y equals negative A. So it's a horizontal line right here at negative A. So if this was at 0, 2, this would be the line y equals negative 2. If this was at 0, 5, if it was 5 up on the y-axis, this would be y equals negative 5. So this would be down 5 on the y-axis. So you'll notice there are no uh, little hatch marks on here, Okay, no scaling on the axes. I'm just going to put this one at 0, A on the y-axis, and this one's at negative A on the y-axis. Everybody good there? Okay, I'm going to switch colors here. Okay, the easiest point to find on the parabola that's given by this point and this line, remember, it's got to be points that are the same distance from the point and the line. So the easiest one to find is right here. Because it's the same distance from the point as it is from the line. It's right on the y-axis. It's A units from here to here, and it's A units from here to here. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. All right, so I'm going to make this a little bit larger so we can kind of tell what's going on. So let's find some other points. Now, if I come over here just a little bit, okay, let's go over about that far. Okay, is it closer to the line or closer to the point? It's closer to the line because let me, let me put this point right here. Okay, it would be this far from the line and it would be this far from the point. Okay, well that... that slanted line is longer than this vertical line, okay? So in order to make those the same distance, I'm going to have to take this point, and it can't stay on the x-axis. It's got to move where? Up or down? It's got to move up just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to eyeball it. I'm going to put it about right there, okay? Does that look like it's about the same distance? Okay, maybe move it down just a little bit to about right there. Does that look a little better? So that line, is that line the same as that line right there? That, that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to erase the two of those, and I'm going to keep this point right here. Okay, now, if I did the same thing on the other side, if I went over here, I can't stay on the x-axis there. I've got to go up just a little bit, 
And if I go the same amount horizontally, I'd probably have to change the same amount vertically, so I'd be about right there also. Everybody good with that? Okay. What if I go over to here? Does everybody agree I've still got to go up? Yeah. Okay, up a little bit more. Does that look about right? So let me draw this line, and let's just eyeball it. Does that work? They look like they're about the same length. So I'm going to keep that one. If I did another one over here, let's see. I think I've got to go about right here. I certainly couldn't be here. That's really close to the line okay, and far away from the point. I'd probably have to go to about right there. So if I draw this line and this line, do those look like they're roughly? Now, realize we're just eyeballing it. Does that look like they're roughly the same length? Okay. Maybe I'd need to move this one down just a little bit. Okay. But they're in the ballpark, correct? So if I put these two points over here, I could do the same thing and I could put corresponding points or symmetric points, one there and one there. Well, gosh, that's one, two, seven points. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? What does it look like? Looks like a parabola. Okay, so this definition is what makes this shape. You know, it would be very tedious to go through and find all of the points, okay, especially if we were to find exactly what they were, but that's the basic shape. It continues curving up. The further we go horizontally, the further we're going to have to go up. Okay? Is everybody good with that? Okay, that is the definition of a parabola. They come up a lot. We call them quadratics, um, and we only deal with parabolas that open up or down, okay, up until now. But now we're going to deal with the ones that open to the right and left, up and down, all sorts of stuff. And if we were to go further in Chapter 11, okay, and thankfully they don't ask you to do this, but you can have parabolas that tilt to the side okay, and open like that. So some pretty funky things. And they use those things all the time in science and mathematics and stuff like that. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at this one. And let's talk about some of its features. With the point at 0a, the directrix is... Y equals negative A, okay? And we get this formula right here. Well, let's take a look at how we'd get that formula right there. So I've got this point right here, and I've got this line that produced this graph. I'm going to take this point, and I'm going to call it X comma Y. That's a point on the graph. You know, if you think back, I think yesterday, starter question... What's the distance formula? Okay, so everybody see that? We're going to use that right now. We're going to use that to make this equation right here. So if I'm using this point as the focus, and this point is the directrix, okay, we have to have two things that are equal to each other. Okay, we were just drawing these distances, but now I'm actually going to compute what it is. That distance would be the difference between the x-coordinates, so that's going to be x minus 0 quantity squared, plus y minus a quantity squared, underneath the square root, right? Difference between the x-coordinates squared, difference between the y-coordinates squared. Any questions there? Okay, this one is easier, but it looks harder. How far is it from this point down to the line? Okay, it's going to be the same distance, but how would I how would I note that difference or that distance? How would I figure out using the distance formula how far this is? I've got to have another point here, right? Okay, well, as odd as it seems, I can actually write down what that point is. What's the y-coordinate for any point on this red line? Negative a. Okay. How far is it between this point and this point? How far is it from x down to here? Okay. Or what's the x-coordinate here? What's, let me, okay, let me back up. Let me ask this again. What's the x-coordinate of this point right here? Since we come straight down, it's going to be x. So now let's find the distance. This is going to be, let's see, the difference between the x-coordinates. That's x minus x quantity squared. This is going to be 
y minus minus a. So that's going to be plus a quantity squared. Is everybody good there? And you said it. What do we know about these two distances? They've got to be equal to each other. So I could take the two square roots and set them equal to each other. Or I could just take what's underneath the square root here and set it equal to what's underneath the square root here. It would be like saying, hey, I've got the square root of 8y and it equals the square root of 27. You could set the square roots equal to each other or you could just say 8y is equal to 27 and then solve from there. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take x minus 0 quantity squared plus y minus a quantity squared and set it equal to x minus x quantity squared and y plus a quantity squared. Any questions there? Okay, now let's pause for a second. I told you we were going to get a little mathematical and really use our brains here. Let's not get overwhelmed by this. This is a lot of ugly work. They're, the only numbers in this are just the squares, really. But all we've done is we've worked from the definition and said, you know what, if this is a point on the parabola, it's got to work in the equation. And the equation is produced by setting this distance, which is right here, equal to this distance, which is right here. So all we've done is just set two distances equal to each other, and then we're just going to make this look a little bit better. Now, parts of this are going to work out really nice. What's the easiest way to write this? Mm. What's x minus 0 quantity squared? x squared. This is just x squared. That's all this is. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is a perfect trinomial square. This is where that stuff that you learned in 1010 and that we worked on earlier this semester about factoring and perfect trinomial squares and all that sort of stuff. This is going to be y squared minus 2ay plus a squared. This other side over here, what's the easiest way to write x minus x quantity squared? Careful. Let's make it easy. What's x minus x? Zero. Zero squared is still zero. So this is, it's gone. It's just a zero. Okay? There's no difference in those two x coordinates. Okay? The only distance here is produced by the difference in the y coordinates. And this is the difference in the y coordinates. It was y minus minus a, so it's y plus a. And we get y squared plus 2ay plus a squared. Okay, I'm going to blow this up again. Take a good look. Here's where we are. We're at this point right here. Does that not look like a mess? But is it? Let's take a good look. Look at some of the things that cancel each other, cancel each other out. There's a y squared here, and there's a y squared there. So I can subtract that from each side. Those two cancel each other out. There's an a squared here, and there's an a squared here. So that's good. So let's uh, skip down one line, and let's write down what we've got at this point. This is x squared minus 2ay equals 2ay. Okay, now, you can't solve this. This is a, a formula, if you will. This is an equation that rep represents that. You're not going to get everything on one side by itself. Let's take a look at what we wanted. We said it would produce the equation x squared equals 4ay. How do I take this and make it look like that right there? Yeah, let's collect the ay's on the same side. So I'm going to add 2ay to both sides. So that's going to give me x squared left on this side. And that's going to give me plus two more ay, so that's going to give me 4ay, and there's the equation. There it is right there. That's how we produce that. This is the simplest one to produce for a parabola. Okay, so we kind of made these points up because they're very convenient. They'll help produce the, the, uh, the typical form of a exponent, or excuse me, uh, parabola. Okay? okay, now let's take a look at this parabola. Which way does this parabola open? opens up. Where's the vertex? Vertex is at 0, 0. Okay? In other words, it's at the origin. Okay? And we're going to set up a lot of these conic sections so they start out at the origin. Okay? 
And it says, blank is the distance from the vertex to the focus and to the directrix. Well, let's come back here and let's take a look at this. This is the vertex right here. So there's the vertex, this point right here. Blank is the distance from the vertex to the focus and to the directrix. So how far is it from the vertex to the focus? And how far is it from the vertex to the directrix? If you're at 0, 0 and you go up to 0, A, how far did you go? A. a. And if you went from 0, 0 down to negative A, how far did you go? A. a. So A is a distance. It's the distance from the vertex to the focus and from the vertex to the directrix. Okay? The, the vertex is smack dab in the middle. Okay? All right, and this is important. Okay, this is true of all conic sections. It says the focus will always be inside the curved part of the conic section. It'll always be inside the curved part of the conic section. So here's the conic section. Here's the parabola. The focus is inside here. Okay, focus is that point right there, 0, comma A. All right, any questions? Okay, and for that one, I'm going to write, uh, uh, let's see, let me write it over here. Focus, I'll just emphasize that there. Okay, so uh, let's see, what would happen if we turned the graph 90 degrees clockwise? So we had a vertical directrix, and then instead of having the focus on the y-axis, we have it on the x-axis. So that would be the vertex right here, right? This would be the point, well, if this is A, this would be the point A0. What would the equation for this vertical line be? It would be x equals negative A. Okay, now, if this is the directrix and this is the focus, the parabola always has to wrap around the focus. It's all, the focus has always got to be inside. So if the directrix is here and the focus is there, isn't it going to go something like this? It's going to wrap around like this. That's what the parabola would look like. You know, what changed? Okay, instead of opening up, it's going to open to the right. But instead of 0a, I have a0. Instead of y equals negative a, I have x equals negative a. So what got switched? What's that? The x and y coordinate switched, right? All the x stuff got switched for y stuff. So if we went through this entire mess with this uh, little picture right here and got this equation, x squared equals 4ay, if we switch all the x stuff for y stuff, what would the equation be for something like this? If we switch the x's for y's, this would be y squared equals 4ax. Opens to the right. So if we've got x squared, it opens up. If we've got y squared, it opens down. Okay. Or maybe said a little bit more accurately, if you've got x squared, if x is the squared variable, it's going to open up or down. It's going to depend on whether we have a sign that's negative in there. Okay. And if we've got y squared, it's going to open to the right or to the left. Right. Does that make sense? Okay. What's that? Okay, if you've got x squared, if it's a parabola with, so remember, a parabola only has one squared variable. If the x is squared, it's going to either open up or down. If the y is squared, it's going to open right or left. Okay, notice that both of these are positive. So with a positive one, it's a graph that opens up. With a positive one here, it's a graph that opens to the right. What if we threw a negative in front of this? It would change the direction. It would open to the left rather than the right. And what if we, what if we threw a negative on here? It, it would open down rather than up. Okay, does that make sense? Easy enough? Okay. All right, well, let's do some graphs then. 
So here's the equation. x squared equals 8y. Now, it's got one squared variable, so it's definitely a parabola. Which one is squared? x is squared. So this is going to open either up or down. The way we tell is, notice that it's all positive. If it's all positive, this one's going to open up. It's going to open up. Okay, now, remember, it's got to be x squared equals 4ay. Now, what's in place of where the 4a usually goes? An 8. So that means 4a must equal 8. Now, why was a important? Told us how far the vertex was from the focus and how far it was from the directrix. Okay, so on this one right here, this tells us that a equals 2. Now, if you don't have x plus or minus something or y plus or minus something, where is the vertex for this parabola? 0, 0. It's at the origin. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that there. There's the vertex. Okay, we already established the fact that this one opens up. So we're looking for a parabola that goes like this. Okay, and let's put the focus in there. The focus is going to be right here, two units inside the parabola. So the focus is right there. And the directrix is going to be down here. A units beneath the parabola. So we go two units. Remember, that's why we found A. So this is the directrix. So this would be Y equals negative 2. Where would the focus be? It, it would be at 0, 2. Okay, so there's the focus. And here's the vertex. The vertex is at 0, 0. Okay? Any questions? Okay, so we're going to have a graph that looks something like this. Okay, don't draw that yet. Okay, watch. Or maybe it looks like this. Or maybe it looks like this. Okay, how do we tell which one it is? Do we tell if it's a really narrow one, a really steep one, or a really shallow one, a really wide one? I mean, heck, it could even be something like this. Well, it actually depends on what the 8 is. Because remember, when we're graphing these normally, normally we wouldn't have the 8 sitting over here. Normally we'd multiply this by 1 8 on each side and have y equals 1 8 x squared. So that would be a good indication that it's going to be more of a wide one because we've multiplied it by 1 8. We've done a vertical shrink. But there's actually an easier way to tell which one it is. Okay, So off to the side there, so I'm going to make this this size, Okay, is uh, one more nice feature. Okay, and you need to know this. Has anybody studied conic sections and know what I'm going to talk about next? Pretty funky word. Weirdest word in mathematics. Okay, um, There's one more feature in addition to the vertex, the focus, and directrix that we ought to be aware of, and that is something called the lattice. You ready for this? It's called the lattice rectum. Okay. Now, because we don't say rectum very much in math classes, and most people, I mean, when you say rectum, I mean, most people just smile, right? Okay, we're going to call that the LR, okay? We use HA for horizontal asymptote, VA for vertical asymptote. We're going to use LR for lattice rectum. Okay, now the lattice rectum has this really unique property, okay? Its length is 4A. Whatever A is, you multiply it by 4. That's how long the lattice rectum is. So I'm going to show you what the lattice rectum is on this particular one. Okay, I'm going to erase all of these guys right here. Here's how you tell. Um, so, well, wait a minute. 4a, haven't we seen 4a before when we're talking about parabolas? Isn't that number right there? Isn't that 4a? So how long is the lattice rectum on this one? The lattice rectum is 8 units long. Okay, now here's the cool part. Here's where the lattice rectum is. The lattice rectum is a line that's 8 units long on this particular one that goes right through the focus. So if it's 8 units long, it's going to be 4 units on either side. So from this point to this point right here, that is the lattice rectum. It goes through the focus, and it's 4A long. So in this case, it's 8 units long. So if the lattice rectum were 16, how much would you go on each side? If it was 5, how much would you go on each side? 2.5. Okay, the lattice rectum in this case is 8 units long, so we go 4 on this side and 4 on that side. I'm going to erase that line. 
Those two points there, they are on the parabola. They're on the end points of the lattice rectum, and they are on the parabola. So, it's a fairly shallow one. It's not a very steep parabola. Okay. Any questions? Label that point, and label that point, please. What coordinates should be really easy to figure out? Well, they're, they're both kind of easy to figure out, but if you know it goes through 0, 2, wouldn't these have the same y coordinates? So this is 0, 2, this would be 2, this would be 2. I went forward how far? 4. So this would be 4, 2, and this would be negative 4, 2. Now, take a good look at that graph. If this were on a test, and you will have something like this on a test, is that a pretty convincing graph? Does it look like whoever graphed that knows what they're doing? Okay, That's what your graphs are going to have to look like. Okay, You don't need to find a bunch of points, but you do need to find the vertex, the focus, the directrix, and the end points of the lattice rectum. That'll make a nice quick sketch for you. Okay, And the cool thing about this is the lattice rectum is it's normally a nice number that you can divide by two. Not always. But either way, I mean, even if we took 5 and divided it by 2, we'd go 2 and a half on either side. That wouldn't be hard. Okay, any questions? Okay, let's take a look at this one then. Okay, where's the vertex going to be? Vertex is going to be 0, 0. Okay. Opens which way? Careful here. This is y squared. So it's not going to open up or down. It's going to either open to the right or to the left. And because it's a positive, it's going to open to the right. Okay, so it opens right. Okay, if you need to do this, 4a is equal to whatever this number is right here. So 4a is equal to 4. So how much is a for this particular parabola? a is 1. So let's uh, go ahead and start drawing this. Let's put the vertex right here. We already said it opens to the right, so it's going to curve around like this. The focus has to be inside the curved part. Well, the curved part's going to be around here, so we've got to put one. How far inside here? One unit. So that right there is the focus. So I've got the vertex right here. I've got the focus right there. The directrix has to be straight on the other side. So this has got to be the directrix. I'll just put D-I-R period for that one. Okay, now let's label a couple of these. This is going to be X equals negative 1, because remember, that's a vertical line here. We've already got the vertex labeled here. The focus, where would the focus be? One comma zero. One comma zero, because we changed the X coordinate. We went to the right one unit, didn't go up or down. Everybody good there? Okay, I need two more points. They are the endpoints of what? Endpoints of the lattice rectum. Okay, how long is the lattice rectum? It's four. You can look at the equation. Once you have it in this form, you can look at the equation and say, hey, it's four units long. So I need to go up and down to get to that. How far am I going to go up? Two units. Two units down. So the whole thing is four units altogether. And here's my parabola. Connect those. If I were going to be really convincing, I'd want to do one other thing, or I guess two other things. What would that be? Label the endpoints of the lattice rectum. Endpoints would be same x coordinate, 1, comma 2, same x coordinate, 1, comma negative 2. Again, take a look at that. Everybody clear there? Okay. Any questions? Okay. At least pretty easy. Hope so. Let's take a look at this. What happened here? John. It's moving. If we change the x by adding or subtracting something, it's going to move it in the x direction. This is a horizontal shift. Do you remember what happens when we put something in parentheses and change the variable before we make the shape? It's going to do the opposite of what you think. So this is actually going to move the graph to the right 2 and down 1. 
So this is right two and down one. So where is, I'm going to change colors here, where is the vertex on this one? Two negative one. Okay. The lattice rectum is how long? Eight. Okay, and how much is A? Okay, 4A is equal to 8. So what's A? A is 2. Wait just a second. Didn't we have one that had a lattice rectum that was 8 units long? Wasn't that lattice rectum 8 units long? So the only difference between the two of these is it's the exact same parabola. It's the exact same shape. It's just been moved over 2 and down one. So we're right here. That's where the vertex is. The focus is still going to be two units inside, so there's the focus. The directrix is still going to be two units down here, so here's the directrix. So this would be y equals, not y equals negative two, it would be y equals negative three, because we moved it down one. We moved this over 2 and down 1. So instead of being at 0, 2, we slid it over and down. Or you could just think of this. We're at 2, negative 1. We're going to go up 2. Where's that going to put us? 2, comma 1. 2, comma 1. Okay, once we've got those, we just draw the endpoints of the lattice rectum and we're in business. How far do I go on either side? Four, eight in total, four on either side. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, right here. One, two, three, four, right here. I'm going to draw the graph. It goes through the endpoints of the lattice rectum and then hits the vertex. Crappy looking graph, but I can account for uh, anything that doesn't look quite right by labeling those points. Okay, what's going to stay the same for these three points that are all along that horizontal line? The y-coordinate. So the y-coordinate is going to be 1 for every one of these. I went forward 4, so that's going to be 6. I went back 4, so this is going to be negative 2. Any questions? Okay. How does this shape here compare to this shape here? It's the same shape, right? Because we've got a y squared here, we've got an x, plain old x here, and a 4. That tells us how long the lattice rectum is. And the only thing that's been done is the new vertex is where? Okay, everybody watch, please. Put your pencils down, everybody eyes up here. Here's what people, the mistake people make, and I guarantee somebody's going to make this mistake on the test. They're going to look at this and they're going to say, oh, the new coordinates are, the x coordinate is 1, and the y coordinate is negative three is that right no you have to look really carefully okay on a lot of these conic sections where we normally put an x we might have a y and where we normally have a y we might put an x so you have to really look at this and say well wait a minute we changed the x by how much three not one so this is going to be negative three comma how much did we change the y Look at the stuff with the Y, put that with the Y information, and look at the stuff with the X, put that with the X information. So this is going to be 3, 1. So back 3, up 1. That's where the vertex is. As far as everything else goes, it's exactly the same shape. So the focus has got to be inside one unit. The directrix has got to be outside one unit. If this is negative 3, this is x equals negative 4 for the directrix. If this is negative 3, 1, the focus has got to be, let's see, it's still one unit above the x-axis, so that's going to be 1. But we went forward one unit, so that's going to be negative 2. And then what are the only other two things I need to draw here? Yep, the endpoints of the lattice rectum. How far did I need to go up and down here? How long was the lattice rectum on this one? Four all together, so I'm going to go up two, and I'm going to go down two, and we'll just label these points. One of the coordinates stays the same. Which coordinate stays the same? 
the x coordinate. So this is negative 2 comma, go up 2, that's going to be a 3, and negative 2 comma, negative 1. There's your graph. Okay, any questions? Sure? Okay. Pretty easy so far? A little more stuff to keep track of. Go ahead and flip the page over. Okay, now if you want, um, in your textbook is this little chart right here. So let me blow that up just a tad more. Okay, and it says, okay, it's got a vertex. Here's where the focus is. Here's where the directrix is. And this is the form of the equation. So you'll notice we've got x squareds here. And the only difference is whether the 4a is positive or negative. Okay? This is going to open up. This is going to open down. Okay? Now the y is squared. That's either right or left. The only difference between these setups here is if it's 4a, 4a and it's positive, it's going to open right. And if it's negative, it's going to open to the left. Okay? I really, this is all true. Okay, but I would much prefer that you think of it this way. Once you get it in the correct form, so you've got to have it looking like this. Perfect square all by itself over here. Coefficient in front here um, with just a plain old y plus or minus something. Okay, the vertex would be at, changed it by h, so that would be h. Change the y coordinate by k, so it's going to be at h comma k. We're very happy about that. Don't get me wrong, but I am going to continue with this. Okay? So, if 4a is positive, if it's just a plain old 4a, which way is it going to open? It's going to open up. If it's negative 4a, what does the negative tell us? Opens down. Again, if you've got an x squared, it's either going to open up or down, and you tell by the sign of the 4a. If it's negative, opens down. If it's positive, opens up. Okay? Again, take a look at how these stay together. The k stays with the y, so look at the y stuff, figure out how that changed. Look at the x stuff, figure out how that changed. So its vertex is going to be at, careful, what's with the x? h. What's with the y? k. Okay, we're always going to have h with the x, and we're always going to have k with the y. What if it's positive? Which way does it open? right. And if it's negative, left. Okay? So this little box is a summary of everything we went through on that previous page. If you make it look like this, you can tell exactly what it looks like. Okay, are there any questions there? Okay, so here's where we really get into the thinking. You're not always given an equation that's in that nice graph-friendly form. I mean, if it looks like this, this took about half an hour to go over the equation, how we derive it, and all that sort of stuff. And we graphed a couple of these. You, you're pros at that. That's not very difficult. And in some ways, it's actually easier than the parabolas that we graphed before because there's no keeping track of, okay, it opens up or down, vertical stretch, shrink, which was it, and all that sort of stuff. Get the vertex, get the focus and directrix, do the lattice rectum, and you're done. Okay? So that's just a summary, but sometimes you're not going to be given an equation in that form, and sometimes you're just given an information about the parabola, and you have to come up with what the equation would be. So here's what we've got. We have a vertex at 0, 0, and a focus at 0, 3. What's the equation? So what you should start with is, well, let's just draw a sketch. 0, 0 is here. Well, I know that tells me h and k. And the focus is 0, 3. Well, wait just a second. 0, 3. 1, 2, 3. There's the focus. There's the vertex. Well, if you think about it, that tells me everything I need to know. Because the parabola has to look like this. Remember, the focus is always inside the curved part of the conic section. Let's see, this opens up. Which variable is squared? X is squared. If it opens up or down, it's got to be an X squared. So it's X minus H, quantity squared, 4A, Y minus K. It's that form right there. Now, what are H and K? They're both zeros. So this is X squared equals 4A times Y. 
What's the only thing I need at this point to make the equation? What's the only thing missing from here? I don't know what A is. I need a number right here. Okay? I don't want to leave it with an A, but remember what A is. A is the distance from the focus to the vertex or the vertex to the directrix. So the directrix would be down here. How far is it from here to here? 3. So what's A? 4 times 3 is 12, so here's the answer. x squared equals 12y. You have problems like that, where they describe the, the parabola, and you have to come up with the equation. Any questions there? Okay, let's look at the next one. Vertex is 3, 2. Okay, what does that tell you right there without any other information? It's shifted. This is, what letter do we use for this one? That's H, and that's K. We already know H and K. So let's draw a quick sketch. One, two, three. One, two. So here's our vertex. And then it says the directrix is X equals 1. The directrix is X equals 1. X equals 1. What type of line is that? It's a vertical line. Very good. Vertical line. So it's a vertical line right here. So if this is the directrix and this is the vertex, where would the focus be? Over here, right? Wouldn't it be over there? Because it has to curve away from the directrix. So it's got to be something like this. Does everybody see that? Again, this is, these are not hard. This is just getting used to, what did that piece of information tell me? That's a vertical line. That's the vertex right there. It's got to curve around away from the directrix, the focus has got to be in here. So it opens to the right. Which variable is squared? Y is squared. So this is going to be Y minus K, quantity squared, for A, X minus H. We already said we know X and H, right? Y minus, careful with this, Y minus what? Y minus the 2. The 2 is with the Y, okay? For a, x minus 3. Okay, and if you can skip this step right here, that's great. What is a? Okay, if this is at 3, 2, and this is at x equals 1, it's two units in between the two of these. So this tells us that a equals 2. So what number should I put here instead of 4a? In total, that would be 8. So here's the answer to that problem. Y minus 2, quantity squared, 8, X minus 3. There's the answer. Whoops. There's the answer. Okay. Any questions? Um, we figured out that A was 2. Because if this is at 3 and this is at 1, it's 2 units in between the directrix and the vertex. So that's got to be 2. So 2 times 4 would be 8. Questions? Okay. Um, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to look at the last couple problems on this page, so example 4 and example 5. Um, make sure you can do those by the time you come to class tomorrow. These are just, uh, it says find the vertex, the focus, and directrix for the given equation of a parabola. Um, does it say graph? Does not say graph. Okay. This one says graph and label the important parts on these guys right here. I'd like you to do those. Have that done tomorrow when you come to class, and then we're in good shape. Okay? We'll finish this up tomorrow, and you'll have some time to work. If you wanted to get started on the homework, it's right there. You can probably do some of those problems, but not all. Have a good day.